Good evening, everyone. Jose J. Garcia, real estate investor, coach, and mentor. So I know it's Sunday. I know it's Easter. So happy Easter day to everyone. Happy Sunday. Definitely glad to be back after a full week. Um, yes, we've been doing quite a bit of uh, traveling, a lot of business. So a lot of stuff happening, a lot of stuff happening, but we're back 100%. I know we have massive amount of emails and texting calls and, you know, we're going to catch all up. Absolutely. The full team is back up and going and we are back. So I know I know we got a lot of requests, a lot of coachings, you know, just the typical. Um, I was not intended on being a full week away from being able to text or call. I was misguided. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say that I was misguided. I, you know, once I once I figured out what I could use, it turned out that I could only use social media, which means that I could make uh, Facebook calls or WhatsApp, or, you know, that sort of thing. But, you know, I, I did not prepare for that. That's, that's definitely a learning curve is I didn't prepare. You know, I was thinking I could text and call from overseas, but you can't, you know, not until you get to certain locations. So bottom line, we're back. We're back up going. So, you know, that's lesson learned, but it was great. You know, it was definitely a breather. It was a good business trip. And uh, a, a lot of things that we're looking into, definitely, you know, always structuring, trying to plan for the future, trying to plan for the next deals, the next investments, the next coachings. You know, it's always how we can better our product, our services, and of course, always trying to deliver the best value to you. That being said, let me go ahead and jump onto this call. Again, happy Sunday, happy Easter. I'm not going to make this call long. It is back, you know, honest, I don't think we've even blasted, uh, you know, our emails on this one, so I'm not sure how many people join us on Instagram, but it is being recorded. So for those of you who do not catch it tonight, it'll be live on our YouTube first thing in the morning. So, all right, let's jump on into. So tonight's call looks like uh, they set it up for turning mobile home rentals into ATM cash assets. That's a typical name used for mobile homes. I've heard them say cash cows. They are uh, continued passive income, cash flow, ATMs. Of course, you know, yes. And the reason behind it is because every month they spit out money, they pay you, they pay you back to back as long as your your lease agreements, your agreements are set accordingly. You will stumble upon, and I'm going to jump on a little bit into the landlord and eviction as well because you will have those. You know, I keep hearing a little bit more and more. It seems like, and I don't know if it's the time of year, the market is shifting. I know it's time to pivot because now not everybody has 20, 30 cash on their on their back pocket to say, here you go. But that being said, it's like, you know, it's all about pivoting. You know, it's there's always a need for affordability housing. It does not matter what time of year. But what it does also mean is that this time of year is not a quick sell. It's not a quick flip. Now, this is where you start to get creative. And then you have to do special financing, creative financing, special type of financing, maybe RTOs, which is rent to owns, lease options, agrees, you know, there's all kinds of, you, you have to pivot. That's what I'm getting at. So, but that being said, as you know, Along with that, you will have uh, certain tenants, certain residents that don't pay. They just flake out on you and month goes by and they don't pay you. You don't hear from them. So, you know, it, it just kind of goes hand in hand. You, you got to focus, pay attention on what it is. But definitely, uh, you know, rentals are the longest passive income, no doubt. Because think about it, you know, no matter how many years go by, as long as you maintain that property, that mobile home, call it property, um, they will continue to pay every month. And at the end of three years, five years, 10 years, however many years, you can say, okay, I am done being a landlord. Now it's time for me to sell it, to flip it, to maybe sell it to another investor. But the value of the mobile home is still there at whatever the market is, right? So a quick example of that would be, let's say I do a lease option from the get-go. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do a rent to own okay? We're going to sell this one, three bedroom, two bath, uh, 86 four. We're just, we're just tossing the numbers out there. We're going to sell it for 25000 Okay. Now, it's not going to be cash because they need financing, which is fine. So I'm going to take a 5000 down payment, and then I'll finance the other 20000 for three, four, five years. I don't typically exceed over five years. Um, we won't get into that too much, but it's typically five years is what I want. And then, obviously, we go into another one. So, But that um, in those three to five years, you, you know, you, you're going to get collected payments, payments. And at the end of it, of course, you know, there is an end date to it which means after those three or five years is the home is gone. Now you got to do another one. And though it's a beautiful thing, you know, I always feel like here's how I add value. Here's how I create opportunities is I want people to pay me off sooner or later. You know, whatever the agreement says, I don't want to chase people for late fees, for late payments. They can't make a payment because of this. Or I don't care about none of that. I'd rather you make your payments on time. Don't pay extra and pay me off so that I can hand you the title. Here's your home. Here's your opportunity. You've done it. 
It's your home. Do whatever you want with it at that time. Half and half. I will say 50% of those paid off, 50% do not. That's a shocker to a lot of people. But, you know, in some circumstances, I will say now to 10 people, do not pay it off. That's the way it works. So, you, again, you just got to kind of keep these things in mind. But when I do rentals instead, you know, yes, I am a landlord. And I'm going to talk about some ways you can get away from me and having so much responsibility. But even though I'm, I'm a rental, it's, it's a rental, I'm a landlord. It's, you know, three, five years go by. And again, the value is still there because I haven't sold a home. These people, these residents are not paying me off. They're simply paying to live there. Same as an apartment complex. You're never going to own it. Yeah, as long as you live there, you're paying simply to stay as long as you're going to be there. And then you move on, but you own none of it, right? So that's kind of the beauty. And again, you know, you should do all the above. Do lease options, do rent the homes, do Airbnbs, do Section 8s, do rentals. All these are creative cash flows in a sense, right? Everything people are doing, investors in real estate, is we are doing it in mobile homes and then some. It can be done, right? All right. So now, how do you create them into cash flows, the ATM? Because if you are a landlord, is, you know, houses, stick bills, they break. And mobile homes break just a little bit more. So what happens is maybe you might go two, three months where there's no issues. Okay, I will still check up on the home. But uh, then there's an issue. Now there's a leak in the bathroom. It damaged the floor. We got to take up the vinyl. We got to take up the flooring. But you, so, so there's repairs to be done. Now, what happens when you have that is obviously you're thinking about what the expenses versus the ROI, return on the investments. If I'm collecting four or five hundred a month and I have an issue, a, a leak and something damaged, that cost me a thousand dollars. We just toss the numbers. Last two months, I had to recoup before I can start making money again. So you see how the setbacks will work back and forth. Now, you know, any rental that we do, we do extensive rehab to a certain degree because we know that, again, things will break. But we want to make sure that we do the best rehab possible within budget to be able to say this will last longer. And again, of course, then, then it's your responsibility as who you allow to move in. You allow some college students to like party, be wild, et cetera, not calling anybody out. But this that home is probably going to tear up a little bit more than the 60-year-old sweet lady, right? Kind of makes sense. We're not, we're, we're not being uh, ageist here by any means. But again, it's like, you know, when I do screening, which is huge, never rush the process of screening. I don't want to pay lot rent one more month because it's getting uh, it's taking budget out of my pocket. I'm going to just let the person next person who comes in just go in and take the property. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see. This is your asset protected as such. I've done extensive rehab. I've done so much labor, so much work, so much money. It's my investment. It's also a lot of time. I'm not just going to let any Joe off the street come in and say, go ahead and have it because you're going to make the next payment. Right. So but the responsibilities, I, I don't want to fix toilets. I don't want to hear about your sink. I don't want to hear about any of these messes. So one way that we have created these lease agreements, which is uh, really a rental with an option to is creating set amount of months followed by a next month after that with a short payment, which is nothing. So here's an example of that. Let's say I have a mobile home ready. Ready to, again, same 86 Fortin is ready to go. I can sell it for $25,000. The way I would structure that paperwork would be, you know, you can pay me 36 months at set amount. Now, obviously, that set amount is going to accumulate the law rent, the home payment, and whatever utilities or whatever comes with the home. All, everything is accounted for. After 36 months, that would have equal to 25000 that I want. So it means that month 37, they can uh, they can purchase the mobile home from me for $10, $20. That is probably one of the best strategies I see many, many big investors. And I see this with houses as well, is being protected. Because what happens when you start getting into this whole, and I hope nobody, by the way, at this point is doing lease options and talking interest. Remove that word out of your vocabulary. Do not use interest. You're not a bank, unless you're a bank. If you're Wells Fargo or one big institute with license, insurance, it's all kinds, have at it. But more times than not, you're not. So that being said, is take away interest out of your out of your mouth. Don't use that anymore. 2022, 2023, a lot of rules and laws are starting to change. And that's because so many people are getting into mobile home investing. So anyway, we put that responsibility on them by saying, look, after 36 months, you can purchase the mobile home from us for $10 or $20, whatever it may be. That's really the paid off balance of. Now, if you miss any payments, obviously you'll forfeit the home. We, we get the 
evicts you. Doing it in a rental in this manner formula that I'm talking about makes it easier for you to, to come in and say, well, I'm going to evict somebody if they don't pay. You know, years ago, and I say years ago, it's probably about two years ago, we had a, the judge didn't really understand the mobile home uh, game, the industry, whatever you want to call it. And we knew that, you know, nothing against them. But as soon as we went up to, you can tell he was uncomfortable with how everything was structured. And he kept talking about equity. There's equity here. They, they, surely they pay some balance. There's equity. Personal property and real property work very different. This is not a house. This is not step built. And this is not real property, meaning not real estate. When it comes to personal property, it is no different than a vehicle. Let's say you take a vehicle from, it doesn't matter, any institute, Wells Fargo. They set a payment plan and you miss two, three payments under. What happens? Do, do you go to court and say, hey, there's equity here? Or do they simply come and repo your car? Well, then the same factor that works. But the judge didn't understand that, ended up sending us to magistrate court, which there was just easy. The magistrate court uh, judge understood and said, there's no equity here, this is personal property. Same thing that I had said previous uh, court. But anyway, you start getting into this little lease options, agreements, rental owns, they can get confusing. Depends on the counties and depends on your paperwork. I always say, make sure you have your paperwork intact. But the best formula, if I were to suggest to, to any of you, any of them, is use the same method I just said. Use a normal lease option. I am renting to you. I'm going to rent to you for 36 months. Month 37, you can buy it. That's just an agreement we have. When it's time to evict, if you have to evict, they don't pay you. It's easy. It's a lot more simpler. There's not a whole lot of confusion. And again, everything stays as is. But one of the big things to keep in mind, again, is put the responsibility on them. The fact that I'm giving you 36 months to pay back to back on time and on month 37, uh, you get to buy for only $10 means that I'm not going to come in. I'm not a landlord at this point. You're going to be responsible for any maintenance, any repairs. You know, I want to be notified, of course, but I want you to be able to take care of those. And you put this in writing. All this has to be put in writing. Yes, there's a lot of lease options out there, rentals that, you know, a Landlord may not be responsible until the bill reach, reaches 500 or 1,000. It just depends on the above. So hope that's making sense. Good evening, Instagram. Like I was saying, uh, happy Easter. We're going to be posting this video on YouTube first thing in the morning. So we'll carry on. So let me see. RTOs, rent the owns. Yes, some of these questions are common. This means any maintenance. Yeah, I'll take away facilities. No expenses, higher return. Yeah, you know, when you take, obviously, responsibilities away from you, I don't have to fix that leaky toilet, the sink. There's no repair uh, maintenance fees. So, therefore, every month that I collect is the same amount every month. So, that's consistency. Uh, you know, somebody asked me, could you get a loan on a mobile home as an investor, by the way? I, I meant to make it a real on that. Again, I didn't have the social media, so I wasn't able to do that. But, you know, you can actually take, let's say you are an investor and you have – Five mobile homes. I just say that five uh, mobile homes that you do as rentals, rent owns, lease options. It doesn't matter. You can actually go borrow against that as showing them as proof of monthly uh, passive income. So there's a lot of ways to get creative. Yes, I'm selling these five mobile homes out uh, to individual people, but I can actually get a loan on it because I can show positive income. You, you see, you got to get creative with that. Okay, your responsibility. Yes, sir. Uh, so his... All right. So should tenants fail? Yes. So if tenants fail to make the payments, like I said, that's the same thing. You're simply evicting a tenant. Learn to call that. You know, don't call them residents. Don't call them buyers. These are tenants. They were simply tenants. And so they met the 36 months or 40 months, whatever it may be on the agreements. They were just tenants and they can be evicted if they fail to miss a, pay a payment. You know, typically, and this is the same for, for uh, community parks, is payments are due on the 1st. They are late after the 5th. And after the 15th, you get evicted. Simple as that. There's no question mark. You get a, you get a pink sleep on, on the door and that's time to go. You know, I had a... It's aggravating when you get a mobile home back because, again, you know, I like to help. I, I like to add value. And, of course, when they pay me off, it's a bit of a bittersweet, if you will. Yes, I'm glad that old Miss Johnson gets her home. Here's her title. We get to say goodbye. We probably won't ever talk again. But, uh, you know, she gets to have a home. That's great and all. But what happens when you do have to evict somebody? You, you know, a lot of investors look at that as the worst thing possible. I had a coach six years ago who told me, uh, you know, Jay, I, I have um, I have 
evicted seven times. I've sold technically that mobile home, that's the same mobile home, seven different times. I'll take a tenant and they'll pay me for a couple of years, maybe a year. They stop paying, I get rid of them. I'll come in, clean up the home, touch it up, and I'll do it again and again. And seven times he had done that. Now, this was six years ago. So my thought is probably since now he's done another seven times. So you see how much <laughs> passive income. I don't count on that. But those things can happen. Okay. If you have to beg somebody, you simply start over. What did you do with the mobile home you found in a distressed position? You rehabbed it. You put it on the market and you sold it or you rented it. So if you're renting one and you have to beg somebody, do it again. And again, you keep doing that over and over, okay? So look, the formula definitely works the best. That, that's my suggestion is if anybody's trying to do so, at least options, rent the owns, those documents sound fancy, fancy, doesn't matter. I would stick with rental study. Stick with rental lease agreements and just set it accordingly. I would highly encourage any of you that uh, visit with your local attorney, because I'm not an attorney, and make sure that they verify all the paperwork. You know, don't forget also that if you are investing in different counties, different cities, different states, those laws and rules change. So whatever you use down the street somewhere does not mean it may qualify back here. One of the worst things I've seen is uh, in being in court, because it will happen is somebody, an investor shows up with the paperwork incorrectly. Judges don't like that, and it typically will not side with them or will make them reschedule, which, again, if you're trying to evict somebody and the judge tries to reschedule, now you're talking another few weeks. That's more free living for the tenant, so keep that in mind, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and get into, I know a few other people have joined us on Instagram. Again, I don't think there was a big announcement on tonight, but uh, I'm back. So I figured let me jump and do this quick call. It's awesome to be back. I miss Zoom. I miss Instagram. Um, let's talk about Tuesday real quick. Tuesday, we continue the Let's Do Deals. That's pitching the best off-market mobile home deals. we got a lot new inventory, a lot new opportunities. A lot of it is being up uh, uploaded probably tomorrow and into Tuesday early morning. Definitely check out that uh, the spreadsheet. If you do not have the spreadsheet, send us an email. Instagram, you have our email on our chat. It's jatgarciamhu.com. And then Saturday, okay, there's a couple spots left for Saturday morning. Saturday morning coming up, you know, every Saturday at 10 a.m., we do a live check-in. We try to do the one this past Saturday. Again, didn't work. But this upcoming Saturday, we will not have another one, potentially. Let me put that on a question mark. And the reason why is we have a our next live coaching event. That's going to be cash flow using campers and RVs down in Griffin, Georgia, where we have a few campers and RVs set up, those ready to go. I've actually put them on hold so that I can have this event. And as soon as this event happens, they are rented. These are going to be weekly rentals, monthly rentals, not daily. I don't want to go down into a daily because there's fees with obviously housekeeping, cleaning. It's got to make sense. The numbers have to make sense. But so far, the, the numbers we're seeing, we're projecting, very promising. I, I like what I'm seeing. I like the numbers. I like the demand. That's for sure. As people are lining up and waiting. So that's always a good thing. You know, that's adding value. I keep going back to this. Always add value. But that is next Saturday on Instagram. I've already put the uh, the links, which I have come to figure out that you cannot actually click on those. Maybe you can. I'm not going to click on those now. But send us an email, jacarciamhu.com. We'll send you the link and we'll be happy to have you join us out there. It'll be me, myself, and I'm thinking about a guest speaker uh, to join us out there. So he's going to get the invite tomorrow because I want to stick to very specifics. I want to teach you specific step-by-step -step how to structure. This is your next level rentals, passive income. Hope you can join us there. So, all right, that's going to do it for this evening. I'm glad. Thank you for the few people that joined us this evening. Again, it was last minute uh, joining. So we will post this video on YouTube first thing in the morning. And I hope to see you Saturday morning, uh, Tuesday evening, Tuesday evening and Saturday morning. Thank you for watching.